Um, Elder Wayne, Tommy, Brother Tim, Sister Val. Uh, what's up, Uncle Bye? Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about positioning your prayers. Amen. I think this is something that we as the church need to get a hold on is our prayers. Amen. What's up, Vicky? And I don't think <clears throat> we, like, the theme of these past couple weeks is authority, right? And taking up your authority, but first knowing your authority before taking up your authority. And a part of your authority is your prayer. Amen? Your prayer life is, your, is you taking up your authority as well. You take up your authority in your declaring, but also in your prayers. Amen? And um, God has really been dealing with me a lot about positioning your prayer. You know, for me to position my prayer. Hey, Miss Rose, how you doing? And that for us not to pray amiss. Because I think sometimes us as the body of Christ, sometimes we don't even know how to pray. And sometimes we we pray, 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 and nothing happens, and we wonder why nothing is happening. But our position, our prayers haven't been positioned in the right place, and we we don't know where to pray from sometimes, and we don't know what we're what God has for us. We don't know what God has desired for us. We don't know the treasures that God has in His hand for us. So. First, we, we lack wisdom, right? We lack the things that God wants to provide for us. And then we don't know how to access them because we don't know the authority that we have, right? So a lot of people are going through this life wondering why they can't prosper in the Lord, why they're still struggling with things. and they But they haven't come into their place of knowing who they are in Christ. And a, a big part of having a relationship with Christ is your prayer life. And it's your your communication with God. And and let me tell you, God wants us to come to him in a vulnerable state because we know that he wants us to know that we trust him in everything. He wants us to know that he that we can go to him when we need things, but he also doesn't want us to come to him begging. I don't believe that. Because the Bible says he's never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. I don't believe that God is a God that wants us to approach him. And begging for things, but taking up your authority and what you know that he has said, I'm giving you rightfully as an heir. Amen. So, first of all, we have to know that we have come out of the place of being <clears throat> a hireling, coming out of the place of being a servant, coming out of the place of even being a friend. God says we're friends of God, but ultimately the highest position you can have in God is being an heir. Amen. Because the Bible says we have the spirit of adoption that cries out, Abba, Father. So, God is pushing us into a new level, amen? And, and and each level you go in God, everything has to be increased, amen? Your anointing is increased, your gifting is increased, but also the things that you do for God need to be increased as well, and we're going to talk about that. But today's message is to position your prayer, amen? God wants us to position our prayers, amen? Sorry, my phone charger said that. It wasn't well. All right, so let's just um. Uh, we're gonna be out of Psalm 144 today, amen. So, uh, okay, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for waking us up this morning, God. We thank you for um, President Trump, God, deeming the church to be essential. I know a lot of people have a lot of mixed views on this, but just that statement that the church is essential, God, we thank you for. Um, you being recognized in this season of you being essential, not even really the church house, but you being essential, God. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for protecting us, keeping us, leading us, guiding us, God. We pray for this word today, God, that um, it come straight from the throne room of heaven in Jesus' name. And this word would just um, tug on your people's hearts to know that we don't have to come to you begging, God, but we can come to you declaring, decreeing. And knowing, God, that the faith that we stand behind in you, God, that you will do a great work in your time in God. But I pray even through this word, you reveal to us who we are and show us, God, to position our prayers and to come to you 
boldly, God. The word says to come boldly before the throne of grace, God. And we pray, God, a spirit of boldness on everybody, God, as they hear this word, God. Let it just open up their hearts to come to you deeper and come to you um, more efficient and effectively, God. Lord, we thank you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, so, and this word that I'm... Ah, excuse me. And these things that I say is in no means to, um, to look down on anybody or anything. So please don't take it the wrong way. But I think God is calling us out of a place of being ignorant of who we are. Amen. Because this is a season where the, the church is in need of, of a breakthrough. Amen. The church is in need of the bride to stand up and take its rightful position. Amen. I'm sorry, guys, for finagling with this thing. My charger keeps saying that it's not supported. But it worked last night. But whatever. But, um, yes, I believe God is calling us into a place of we're taking our position as the bride. And as the bride, we know who our covering is, which is our husband, Jesus, who is the bridegroom. And because we're under his covering, <clears throat> we have all the authority that our covering has. Amen. And Jesus didn't have to beg the father for anything. Jesus simply declared with his mouth and he, and he had the faith behind it and the thing was done. And that's the thing that God is trying to push us into to know and know his timing to believe in him as our source to know the will of the father for our lives and to step into the place where we can have authority. Amen. Praying for us to all have anticipation, expectation for an impartation or an expartation. Come on, Vicky. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, let's move into this. So um, today we're going to be talking from Psalm 144. Amen. And this is, uh, God, please let this charger work too. I don't need this phone dying in Jesus' name. But uh, yes, so Psalm 144. This is a, a Psalm of David. Amen. And everybody knows who David is. David was a... Shepherd boy, he was uh, a guy that defeated Goliath. He ended up becoming a king. Um, and one thing with David, he was a man after God's own heart. Amen. And one thing that I believe God is doing for this generation, a lot of people have said that this is the Joshua and Caleb generation, which it very much is. Amen. Because this generation is going to go and possess the land where everyone else was afraid. This is the generation that's going to take the world by storm. This is the generation that God, I believe, is raising up all of us that are in this generation to, to be the terrible nations, to, to be that standard that God raises up against the enemy when he tries to come in like a flood. Amen. And um, so I believe it's the Joshua Caleb generation, but also what God has been revealing to me is that he wants this to also be a David generation, a generation that is after God's own heart. Amen. A generation that has fallen, that has, <clears throat> we are a generation that has fallen. We are a generation that has gone away from God's heart, but we, God has also, I believe he's raising up David's because there is a remnant, a remnant of this generation that is after God's heart. And it's going to, um, and it's going to be that army that's going to be raised up, that's going to take the kingdom by force. Amen. So we know that David was a shepherd boy. He was a guy that defeated Goliath. He was somebody that, um, that wasn't seemed to fit as king when they went to appoint him, but <clears throat> he was a man after God's own heart. Amen. And he was a man that, um, took God's heart seriously. He, he seeked after God with his whole life, and, you know, even though he did fall, he, he got back up, and he still took back his position. What's up, Uncle Locke? And this is a prayer of David, amen, in Psalm 144. So I'm just going to read it, and then we're going to break it down, amen? So, um, <clears throat> Psalm 144, I'm sorry that my throat, man, my allergies are really acting up today. So, uh, blessed be the Lord, my strength. Which teaches, which teaches my hand to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield. And he in whom I trust, who, who subdueth my people under me. Lord, what is a man that thou shalt taketh knowledge of him? 
or the son of man that thou shalt make account of him? Man is like to vanity. His days are a shadow that path is, that path, 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 pass this away, Lord. <laughs> Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and take thou, and they shall smoke. Cast, cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Send thine hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of the great waters from the hand of the strange children. Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God. Upon a, a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings, I will sing praises unto thee. I will, um, it is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of the strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is the hand of falsehood. That our sons may be pl as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of, of palace, that our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor and there be no breaking in, nor going out, and there be no com complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such a case, ye happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Amen. So this was a Psalm of David, right? David, again, we know was um, a shepherd boy. He was a king. He was a warrior. He was a man that, that was of war. And I believe through David's life, God has shown the strategy of spiritual warfare, right? And of prayers that were strategic. And I say that because of the way that this psalm was written. And David being, this being about David, this, if you, and I'm going to break it down, but this, this prayer I think was very, I think what got me a lot with this prayer is how it was positioned. Amen. And this prayer was seen, uh, believed to be written near the time David had become recognized as king. And, ex and it really expressed David's heart. Amen. It showed God's, it showed that. David was perceiving God and recognizing God as both a God of war and peace. Amen. And this was a prayer of authority. If you look at it, Jesus, David did not beg God in this. That's the, that's the one thing that I liked about this prayer is that David did not beg God in this, in this prayer or in this psalm at all. It was a prayer of authority. It was a psalm of authority. And... It was, he didn't, you know, it was, it was a psalm of declaring, amen? And I thought that this was very good to bring forth in this season because I don't believe this is a time for us to feel like our prayers cannot be heard, that our prayers cannot be effective, that our position in this season of this world where the coronavirus is running, um, running rampant, where um, our children are going astray, um, where... Um, our businesses are falling because of this whole pandemic. God is calling us up to raise up in this season and to calling us to take our position in him. Amen. Because God has given us position in him. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places with Christ because he's gone on. Amen. To be with the father. The Bible says when he, in death, we have died with him. Our old man has died with him. But because we have died with him, also because he has resurrected, we have been resurrected with him as well. Amen. And so we are seated in heavenly places. And, and I've said this before, but we have to know that the position that we're fighting this, this life in is not the, from the position that you're sitting in right now. In the natural, we may be sitting in a chair in the earthly realm, but we are really seated in heavenly places with Christ. We need to stop fighting from the natural realm. We need to stop fighting these battles from a place where we're sitting naturally, but, but take hold of what God says and who he says we are. And know that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ, that we are fighting from that view. 
Amen. In heaven. We are fighting from that view. We're fighting from that position in heaven. Amen. And the first thing we have to know is know the word and know and know who you are. Amen. Um, the scripture shows us that God has called us to be warriors. Amen. But also he gives us training in battle. I believe that. Anybody that does deliverance, we know that through deliverance you learn. Amen. Not every deliverance is the same. Every deliverance is different, but through each deliverance, you are learning something new. Amen. And that is on the job training. Amen. So even when you're doing deliverance on yourself and you're praying over yourself, God will reveal things to you in the moment. God will train you in the moment. Amen. And through David's life, we see that he became a skilled warrior through the midst of a battle. Amen. Before he went to Goliath, he was um, strangling bears and lions. Amen. So the preparation for David was in the midst of the battle. Amen. And a lot of people um, will cry. Why do they have to go through this? Why do they have to go through that? Why are they in this battle? You don't realize that in the midst of your battle, God is training you. Amen. Or he wants to train you. Let me let me reposition that word. He wants to train you in the midst of the battle. It's but the, the whole thing is up to you. You can take what God wants to show you in the midst of your trial right now, or you can just sit and murmur and complain and be like the Israelites and go through, go around the mountain for 40 years. But I believe in the midst of trials, God wants to sharpen your sword. God wants to sharpen your faith. God wants to show you how to take up your weapons. God wants to train you in the midst of the battle to bring you to victory. Amen. And we, and we know through David that it's only when you're placed in the midst of the, the fire or the affliction that you can truly be trained. Amen. But not only be trained in the natural realm, but also be trained in the spiritual realm. That your, that your faith is strengthened, your faith is trained, and your spiritual um, position is being increased in your faith. Amen? And it all goes back to the art of effectual prayers. Like I was saying, you have to position your prayer. Amen. And we have to know that effective, effective prayers are not earthbound. We can't be praying earthbound prayers. We have to pray um, prayers that would war in the heavens. Amen. Because again, we are seated in heavenly places. So we are fighting from a place of victory. Amen. Our earthbound prayer is saying, God, please um, deliver me out of this thing. Or God... Um, this thing looks scary. God, please help me to get through this thing. Or God, uh, please just um, help me. God, like, please, please, please is an earthbound prayer. Amen. Because when you're saying please and you're begging and you're pleading, you don't know who you are. You don't know the promises that God has for you. Amen. The Bible says, for by his stripes you are healed. That's a promise. So because it's a promise already, you don't have to beg for it because it's already yours. So now you shift your prayer to saying, God, I thank you for my healing. I declare that my body is healed. I command my body right now to come into the alignment of the promise that you have already promised me. See, you have to learn and through your trials, God will show you the things that you need to pray and show you how to pray because we have to know what the promises God has for us. Amen. And the Bible says, whatever we, um, we are seated in heavenly places again, and we aren't to look at through the situation out of the eyes of the world or out of the eyes of man, but we look at it out of the eyes of God. The Bible says whatever we bind on earth is already bound in, in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. These are things that God has already promised us. So if he's already promised us and he's already declared it over us, why can't we just take it up? Amen? And declare it over ourselves. You know, the authority in you is what we talked about last week. Amen? And, and it shows you that you take your authority that you take up, it's from heaven. Amen. And the power that is given to you is from the is from the heavens. It's from it's from God. So it's not earthly strength. It's not earthly power. Amen. The Bible says it's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by the spirit. And through the spirit is where you get your heavenly strength, your heavenly authority. You get all of the position in God through the spirit. Amen. We have to get out of the thought that it's out of it's out of earthly knowledge, it's out of earthly intellect, it's out of um, 
earthly strength. We have to know that it's by the Spirit of God that's within us that gives us that power, that gives us that authority, that gives us that, that position in heaven. In the natural realm, we have no position. Amen? We have no um, authority in this natural realm because of the flesh. Amen? The Bible says this flesh is desperately wicked above all measure. It's in the, it's in the spirit. Amen. It's in the spirit that we have the access. That's right, Sister Vicky. It's in the spirit that we have the access to his authority and his and his boldness. Amen. And to be to have effective effective training in the spirit realm, you have to know the promises that God has for you. Like I said, you know, Second Peter one four, it says, "Whereby are given unto us exceeding and great, exceedingly great and precious promises." That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So this is the promise that God has given us. He's given us abundant provision. He's given us healing. He's given us freedom. He's given us restoration. He's given us peace. Amen. But if you don't know what is yours, how do you know what to fight for? Come on, I'm going to say that again. If you don't know what is yours, how would you know what to fight for? That's why we have to get into the word. This is the sword. This is this is our weapon. This is the thing that we take and we cut the enemy's head off. We cut those dragons head off in the spirit. We we defeat Satan with the word like we talked about. Um I don't know if it was last week or the week before when we talked about Jesus and we talked about in the garden when he took up the word Amen. And being the ambassador in Christ. I don't know if that was last week or the week before. But it's what it's the word that you win with. You have to dig into the word to know what is rightfully yours through the inheritance. Amen. But also you have to know that you're a son and a daughter of God first too. That's why it all goes back to your identity. It all goes back to your position. It all goes back to knowing who you are and the authority that is within you. Amen. And the only way that you can know that is God revealing it to you through his word. Amen. Not everyone hears audibly from God. Amen. But you have to dig into the word and let God speak to you through the word. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word is God. Amen. It's the seed. It's the sperma. It's the, the Greek word is sperma for seed. Amen. And God is wanting this seed of the word to be planted in your heart that a harvest would come forth. The harvest that would come to, for you to know who you are in God. So when you know who you are, you know what God has for you. And when you know what God has for you, you're able to declare it from the place of being an heir and a son of God. Amen. But first you need to know who you are in God and live like you're a son of God. Let's go back to that real quick. You can't be living any type of way and declaring the promises as a son of God. Amen. You cannot live any type of way and declare the promises of God over yourself. You have to live into alignment of being a son and a daughter of God. You have to you have to take your position as a child of God by giving your full heart over to God, by giving your full will over to God, by giving your full emotions over to God. You have to know who you are in God and live like you know who you are. Live by what you speak. Live by what you believe. Live by what this word says. Because when you live by the word, that's when the promises can be released. That's when the promises can be imparted. Is by you taking up your position as a son and as a daughter of God. Amen. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. So God has given us precious promises, but the latter of this scripture would say, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Amen. God has given us these promises that we can escape the corruption, that we can escape the lust of the world, that we can escape the depression and the oppression of the word of the world. So you have to know the promises that God has given you. This is why digging into the word is very powerful and it's needed. So you know that you will not be bound by, the, by Satan. That, that sin will not rule over this mortal body. Amen. But that you are free and free indeed because of who you are and the things that you declare over yourself in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
You have to have control over your weapon as well. Amen. Any soldier knows that they have to know that weapon inside out before they can use it. Amen. How to because a weapon that is improperly used can bring harm to yourself. Amen. If you don't know who you are and you declare this word over your life in the wrong manner, you can bring harm to yourself. If you don't know the, the pureness of the word or the desire that God truly has for you and you declare it over yourself, it can bring harm to you. That is why you have to know God at his nature. You have to develop that relationship to him. You have to have that spirit of discernment. You ask God to give you the spirit of discernment to rightly divide the word. So you can know the intentions and the thoughts that God has behind his word for you. So you know how to properly declare it over yourself. Amen. And after all this, you have to have faith behind your prayers. I believe God wants to use us like he used Elijah. Amen. People know that story when, when Elijah called fire down from heaven. Amen. In deliverance, that was, that's what we do. We call fire from heaven to, to consume the, the enemy, to consume the altars of Baal, to consume the idols that's in our life. Amen. It's through the authority that's within us. It's through us knowing who we are, knowing that God is not a respecter of person, that the same anointing that's on Elijah can be on us. But we have to know the position. Elijah knew who he was in God. Amen. He even went forth to de declare a, a drought in the land. Amen. He, he declared a drought in the land because of the, the rebellion of King Ahab. Right. And people will think that it was because Elijah had it in his own will and his own um, desire to declare a drought that the drought came. But the Bible says that God was behind Elijah because in Isaiah, um, not Isaiah, uh, James 5, 17, it says Elias, which is Elijah, was a man subject to the passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. That it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Amen? The Bible says that we have, in the beginning, you know, God had, God had given authority to Adam. Amen? God had given authority to Adam. Um... And Psalm 115, going to that, going back to Elijah as well. Psalm 115, 15 through 16. And God blessed him and God said unto him, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over all of, all of the fish in the sea and the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. Elijah knew that he was created in the image of God and in the likeness and he was crowned with the glory of God. And because um, there was... Um, and because there was rebellion in the land, Elijah took up his authority in God and declared a drought on the land and, the, and um, judgment on the land because they were in rebellion. Elijah knew who he was and he knew that this scripture talked about having authority and, and, and talked about having dominion over the land. Amen. And it was because of his position. And the Bible says he prayed earnestly. Amen. He positioned his prayer. He knew who he was in God. He knew the things that God had for his life. He knew the things that God desired for him. And he took it up and he prayed earnestly. Amen. He prayed with a purpose. He positioned his prayer in God. Amen. And God is calling us to be like Elijah. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 45, 11, is that if it's concerning his his children and the will of God, you can command God. Amen? And God is saying he's giving you authority to even command him. When it's concerning the will of God and concerning his children. Amen? That's another promise. These are the scriptures that we need to get in us to know. These are spiritual warfare scriptures. To know who you are in God and to know the position that you have. Amen? And and the one thing that I love about this scripture in Psalm 144 is that um, it says that he trains his hand for war. Amen. The Bible says it teach. Uh, King James says that it teaches my hand to war. Other versions say he trains my hands. Amen. It doesn't say that he trained David's hands. 
it says it trains with a S. So that means it's an ongoing process. God will always perfect the giftings in you. God will always perfect the callings in you. Amen. He will perfect the the um the authority in you. It's an ongoing process. Satan, God will always expose the plan of the enemy as long as you're in submission to him. Amen. He will always when you, when you're serving God with your full heart and whatever season you're in, God will always continue to build your faith. He will continue to, to do that good work in you. The Bible says, he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus. Amen. So we have to know that this is an ongoing process. Amen. All right, it says 22 people still on here, so I guess we're good, right? All right, good. So, um, yes, so we have to know that this is a continual thing. He will always train our hand in battle, amen? He will always continue the good work in us. He will always teach us through spiritual warfare, new tactics, new ways of defeating the enemy, amen? So, uh, lost you, keep it up, buddy, love you, um... All right, is everybody else on here? Can somebody type if you guys can hear me? Because I don't, I want to, I don't want to, I mean, I might restart it if it's acting up. Um, all right, so I guess we're good because Vicky's still typing. So, so the next thing, um, the beginning of this prayer was a prayer of worship regarding the season of God. Amen. So. The thing is, is that this is the thing that I want to talk about, about this prayer being strategic. Amen. So the beginning of this, um, the beginning of this, this prayer or this psalm that, that was going forth, um, for David, it, it, the beginning was in adoration to God. Amen. The, be the beginning of this prayer in Psalm 44 was, was, um, recognizing who the source was and who ultimately equips you with the, with the, with the, with the weapons in your battle. Amen. When Jesus taught the disciples how to pray, what did the beginning say? Our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's always before you even um, begin to declare things or ask God for things concerning the will of God for your life, you are to always bless God for who he is. Worship him for who he is. We praise God for the things he's done and we worship him for who he is. But we are to always bless God because he is the source of our strength. He is the source of our faith. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. We have to First, acknowledge the source who gives us the power, who gives us the authority within us to fight these battles. Amen. David knew that it was his skill and expertise that was given to God that made him a victor, to made him that gave him victory. Amen. Verses one through two it did, of 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 this um, psalm. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches me my hand to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and He whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Amen. It was thanksgiving and praise. This was David. Referring to God and acknowledging God as Jehovah Gibor. Who is the Lord mighty in battle. Who backed him up in obedience. That brought victory through the spiritual warfare. Through even the natural warfare. Against, the, against his enemies. Amen. And David lifted his voice in praise and adoration to his king. Amen. In war you have a general. You have somebody who is the head. Who, who sends you out in battle. Who equips you. And... And when you're a soldier, you don't only look out for your colleagues, you don't only look out for your fellow soldiers, but you also make sure that the general is protected. You make sure that the general is taken care of. You make sure that, um, and through all that, you also look to the general for advice. You look to the general for guidance. You look to the general who has the authority and the knowledge and the wisdom over the war. And that's the same thing with God. In spiritual warfare, you thank God for who he is. You thank God for giving you the weapons. You thank God for equipping you with the power and the authority that's within you. Amen? And David made sure 
that David made sure that he gave praise and adoration to his king. Amen. The Bible says to be not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Amen. When a soldier is on the field, it's not time to play. Amen. When a soldier is on the field, they don't just look to the to the hills and they don't just look around um, aimlessly. They are in position. They are making sure that their surroundings are, are taken care of. They are always on guard. They, there's no room for distraction when you are on the battlefield. Amen. This is one thing that I think that the church has lacked. They have not taken their position. They are they are wandering wandering aimlessly in the world, not knowing their authority, not knowing who their position is. That's right, Vicky. Put on the full armor of God. And this is the time I believe God is saying to stand up. I want to give you victory. I want to deliver you. I want to heal you. But I need to bring you to a place that you know who you are and you know the things that I desire for you. Amen. If we don't know the desires God has for us or we don't know um, the authority that we have within us, sometimes we won't appreciate the things of God. Amen. When you know who you are in God. Let me tell you, when you know who you are in God, you will be so much more grateful for the blessings. You will know, you will be so much more thankful for the things that God gives you. Because let me tell you, you are not entitled to any power. You are not entitled to any authority. We are a man. We have flesh. We have sin. But God still loves us enough as a child of the king, as an heir to the kingdom, as, as inheritance of the father. God has given you power and authority. It's after the Holy Spirit has come upon them them that you shall have power like we talked about last week it's the th it's the power it's the authority in you that's right before we go into battle we have to put our armor on amen ephesians tells you the armor the sword of the spirit the helmet of salvation your feet um shod with the preparation of the gospel peace the um, breastplate of righteousness your your shield of faith your um your belt of truth Amen. All those things are your, you have to know again, you have to know these things. You have to know who you are. We are fighting spiritual battles. First of all, we're fighting spiritual battles thinking they're, they're natural battles. First of all, ignorance. We are fighting, um, uh, we, we're going into the war without our weapons. Another thing, the Bible says that my parents, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen. And the Bible says to be not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Amen. Ignorant doesn't mean that you're stupid. It just means that you don't know. Amen. And this is why we have, again, it goes back to digging into the word, the sword of the spirit. This is your most powerful weapon. Amen. This is your most powerful weapon is the sword because it gives you the instruction. It gives you the knowledge. It gives you the wisdom behind each and every one of your weapons. Amen. But you have to know these things before you go into battle and not even before you go into battle, but even through the battle. When you dig into the word, God will give you the wisdom in the battle like we talked about. Amen. And um, Proverbs 16, 22, understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that has it. But the instruction of fools is folly. Amen. You don't want to take advice from the world of how to fight a spiritual battle or how to fight a battle that's going on in the spirit realm. Why would you take, the Bible says that um, instruction of fools is folly, amen? If you take advice from the world of how to fight a spiritual battle, it's foolishness. But the Bible says understanding is a wellspring of life unto him who has it, amen? This is where you'll get understanding. This is where you're going to get wisdom. It's your sword of the spirit. It's going to give you knowledge. It's going to give you wisdom of how to fight, amen? You are to fight the enemy head on. Amen. I think sometimes we have come to a place where we are so scared of Satan. We are so scared of him that we don't want to fight him head on. But the Bible says that you have authority to trample on him. On serpents and scorpions. But not only serpents and scorpions, but over all the enemy. All of the enemy. So why are we afraid to, why are we afraid to fight him head on? You have to, to defeat an enemy, you have to fight him head on. 
You have to fight that addiction head on. You have to fight that abuse head on. You have to fight that unforgiveness head on. Stop burying these things. God is calling us to wake up, to take our position, because the Bible says that we are already victors. Not victims, but we have the victory in Jesus. Amen? And one thing that David knew is that the same God of peace was a God of war. Amen? The scripture says um, in verses... Um, let's see what verses was. Um, to flash a man of vanity of days, bow down the heavens, O Lord, touch the mountains. Oh, cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Uh, send thine hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of the great waters, out of the hand of the strangers of enemy. Amen. God is a mighty man of war. The Bible says in Exodus 15, 3, the Lord is a man of war and the Lord is his name. Amen. If we have... One thing that I've understood in my walk that God is a man of war because of this, because if Satan is coming up against his children, I know that God is not going to sit back and let Satan take victory because that means that Satan has dominion over us. Amen. That's right. Psalm 91. He who abides in the shadow of the almighty. That scripture. Yeah, I don't know about it, but you know what I mean? But yes, but, um, I don't believe that God has designed Satan to have victory over us. That's why we know that he's a man of war because we have taken that just that scripture alone that he will raise up a standard against the enemy is 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 representation that God is a man of war. And he has called us to take our positions as soldiers. Amen to defeat the enemy. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. But the violent take it by force. 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 The word is force. He is a man of war. He has given us um, and equipped us with weapons and authority and power to defeat Satan in spiritual battles. Amen. The battle, the war is already won. Amen. Jesus said it is finished. Amen. When he, when he, when he hung on the cross. We don't have any... Um, anything to worry about as sin having power over us or authority over us or the things of the world having us in bondage or trying to keep us in bondage because the war has already been won. Amen. So Psalm 24, 8 also says, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong, mighty in battle. He wars against evil. That's right. He, God is a strong warrior. He isn't one that's going to back down when Satan comes up against him. Because God is the God who is the ruler of the universe. If somebody that's under you tries to come up and challenge you, are you going to sit back and, and let them um, walk all over you? No. God will not sit there. Hey, Maria, how you doing? Um, God's not going to sit and let Satan take um, control over anything. Amen. God is a God who will fight for his children, fight for his will, fight for his purpose. Amen. He fights on behalf of his children and gives his children strength and, and spiritual strength to fight the enemy head on. Different level, different le uh, devils. That's right, Sister Vicky. One thing I've learned is the reward of coming out of a battle is a new battle. <laughs> because you we will always go through battles in this life. But what God is doing, he's strengthening in us. He's building us up to be that man that is in the image of Christ. He's strengthening in our character. He's strengthening in us to be that pure image of Christ. Amen. He's a jealous God and he's at war against anything that contests holiness. Amen. So when I was talking about this 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 prayer being um what time is it? Lord, we are just rolling, ain't we? So when I was talking about this word and this psalm, it what I was talking about it being strategic. It was an earnest prayer, amen. So um this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how it was strategic, amen, and how David prayed with a purpose in mind, amen. So, verses 1 and 2 was in praise and exaltation to God, amen. It was giving God the glory, giving God the praise, giving God a glorious... The Bible says we were created to make His praise glorious, amen. So, the beginning of this of this um of this psalm was in praise and adoration to God. Amen. That was that I'm going to show you how it was strategic, all right? So it was in praise and adoration. Verses 3 and 4, it was recognition 
that mankind was nothing compared to God. Three and four. He healed the um he heals the brokenhearted and he bind Oh Lord, I am on I'm in the wrong psalm. Jesus help me, God. You okay. Three and four. <laughs> uh Lord, what is man? That thou taketh knowledge of him, or the son son of man, that thou maketh account for him. Man is like vanity; his days are as shadows that path 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 pathes away. No, I can never say that word. But so the first was in praise and exaltation to God. The second part of this psalm, he said, "Who is man? You know, who is like you, Lord, in all the earth?" Amen. Who is, who are we that you would give us power? Who are we that you would give us authority? Who are we that you would even think of us? You could look at this part of the prayer as repentance. You can look at this part of prayer as recognition of sin. You can look at this prayer, this part of the prayer as denying your flesh so that God can come in and give you power. That God can come in and bring deliverance. That God can come in and give you healing. That God can come in and give you restoration. For God to give you the things of, of Him, you have to deny your flesh first. The things of the flesh, the things of the world need to be uprooted first. So that God can come in and fill you with His Spirit. So that you can have power and, th and authority over all of Satan. Amen? So the second part was recognition of mankind being nothing compared to the Father. Repentance. Recognition of sin. Amen. The third thing was the declaration of God's presence. Say, we're going to say that again. It was declaration of God's presence for deliverance and of deliverance. This is verses 5 through 8. Bow down, bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot down arrows and destroy them. Um, send thine hand from above, rid me and deliver me of all the great waters and from the hand of the strange enemy, whose mouth speaketh vanity and their right hand and their hand of falsehood. The Bible says in, in verse 5, to bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. You, um, we know that when... Um, the children of Israel came out of Egypt. There was a time that God called for Moses to gather the people that God can show his presence to them. Amen. And David wanted God to show up that strong for him. He knew that God was the God that he says in his word. That God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. So if God did it back then, he can do it again. David believed the things of God. He had faith to believe that what he, what he did in Moses' day, he can do in his day. And we shall have that same faith. That, that David wanted God to bow down and bring his presence and reveal himself to him. He believed God at his word. Amen. David wanted God's power to show up as strong as it did, as clear as it did, because he believed in who God was. And he believed the word of God. And I believe God can show up just as strong for us today. Amen. But we have to have the, the faith and the position in him like David did. Then he goes on and he says, rescue me, deliver me. The Bible says, send thine hand, rid me, deliver me out of the great waters and the hand of the... He didn't say, God, please deliver me. He didn't say, God, please rid me. He said, God, rid me. God, deliver me. He took up his words and there was authority behind his words. David was a man of God that stood for righteousness and, and, and was always sought after by Saul. You got to know, you know, that's <laughs> Vicky. I, I miss you, Vicky. And um, the thing is, is that... He stood up for righteousness, right? And Saul was a man of the world. The world. King Saul was a man of the world. He went by the skip of his own beat. And because David was a man of righteousness, there was always men that were seeking after David's life. There was always... That's right. Stand your ground. David stood his ground. And there was always men that tried to get up in Saul's good grace. So they would try and expose David. Amen? Even when David was king, you know, when, when a king stands for righteousness, there are always going to be people that brings backlash, backlash against him. But if you noticed here in this scripture, there was people against David, but David stood his ground and he said, he simply declared his authority. Amen. He did not beg God, but he simply said, rescue me, deliver me from these people. He didn't complain that the people were 
were um were out against him. He didn't complain that um that these people were talking against him, but he simply said, "God, deliver me from these people that are talking against me. Rid me, God, of and deliver me out of these great waters. Deliver me. Send your hand, God, and deliver me out of the hand of these strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity and the right hand." He simply stated and declared what God already has told him that he would do. Amen. And how, would, how did he know that God would deliver him out? From the word. He knew who God was. He had an intimate relationship with God. To be a man after God's own heart, you have to know what's in God's heart. To be a man after God's own heart. And I believe God wants this generation to be a, a man after God's own heart as well. But first, to be a man after God's own heart, you have to know what is in God's heart. Not only for his sake, but for your sake. Amen. Declare and decree. What's up, brother Dan? How you doing, man? Tell Sister Karen I said hi. So, know who know your position in God. Know that you don't have to beg for God to do something. Deliverance is the children's bread. He never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. You, children begging for bread. Deliverance is the children's bread. So if the Bible says that he never seen his children begging for bread, he never should see his children begging for deliverance, but rather decreeing and declaring the deliverance over yourself as David did here. Going on, after decreeing and declaring, God, David then offered a new praise up to God. From verses 9 and 10, I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and instruments of ten strings. I will sing praises unto thee. Amen. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings who delivered David his servant from the hurtful sword. Amen. New victories and new deliverances causes us to sing a fresh and new song to God. It brings us to a new position in worship as being more grateful because your anointing is being increased, your faith is being increased, your deliverance is being increased. Your praise and worship should be taken to a new level when God brings you out of something. Amen. It brings you to a new intimacy with God. So you should be adoring God. You should be seeking God. You should be exalting God at a more intimate level. When God brings you out of something, you should be drawing closer to God because it's that much more that you know God to be a healer and a deliverer. You cannot expect new breakthroughs based off of old sacrifices. Let me tell you, that thing, that, that, that tithe that you gave God and that offering that you gave God uh, three years ago, you can't expect that to bring you a new healing. Amen. And I'm, I don't mean to bring money and all that into it, but I'm just trying to make a point that you cannot expect old sacrifices and old and old offerings. OK, hold on, Nicole. Let me let me let me. OK, you can't expect new breakthroughs based off of old sacrifices. You can't expect new breakthroughs off to off of base based off of old sacrifices. You have to continually die to yourself. You have to continually sacrifice yourself to God to make more room for Jesus. The Bible says, God, I present to you my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That is your reasonable service. That's the baseline. We cannot expect new breakthroughs off of old sacrifices. God is calling you to bring newness to him. Whatever you have, sacrifice time, sacrifice th fast, pray. God wants to do a new thing in you, but he has to make you do, a, you have to do a new thing for God for him to do a new thing for you. We have to continue to die to ourselves. We can't accept, we can't expect um, our sacrifice from last year, our fast from last year. We can't expect old sacrifice to bring God to do a new thing. Amen. God is calling us to die daily, to continually to die to ourselves. Amen. And after that, the last thing, after bringing a new sacrifice, after singing a new song, what David did was declared the victory through deliverance. He declared what would happen when deliverance happened. He declared what happened. Um, in verses 11 through 15, rid me, oh, not rid, rid me, um, that our sons may be as planted, growed up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after, similitude of a palace, that our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousand, so on and so on. He claimed his blessings. Amen. When you're, if you're praying for a child, 
that's addicted or who has gone away from the Lord. You first give praise to God. Amen. Uh, let's go back. You first give praise to God. You recognize you when you're praying, you, you declare that they may be in sin right now. Amen. That they are nothing compared to the power that you have, the deliverance you have. Amen. You ask God to deliver them. You bring a praise. You fast. You, you take your authority in God for them. You, and then you declare them to be the thing that God has called them to be. Amen. There's strategy in this prayer. And let me tell you, this has taught me how to pray differently. Amen. To not just say, to not just say, God heal me or God deliver me, but position my prayer. And to pray with a purpose in mind. Pray with a goal in mind. You don't want to pray amiss. You don't want to pray and your, your prayer don't reach the ceiling. Amen. You want to put time and effort in God. We know that praying is our communication with God. When we continue to commune with God, when we continue to bless God in our praying, what is it? It shows God that we trust him. It shows God that we have faith in him. It shows God that we bless him in who we are. Amen. Again, I spoke this last week, but this scripture just is so powerful to me, and it's one of my new favorite scriptures. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, Satan is consumed by the words of God's mouth and, the bright, and, and is destroyed by the brightness of his coming. The more words you speak backed up by the word and the anointing, the more Satan is confused is consumed. Come on, y'all. You don't want to just say, Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. The more you press in, the more you declare, the more you decree the things that God has, has declared over you and has promised you, the more Satan will have to set loose off of you. The more Satan is consumed, the more Satan is destroyed because of the anointing and the words that come out of your mouth. Position your prayer today. It's powerful. The words that come out of your mouth, if you could see what is happening in the spirit realm, come on. He raises up a standard. The Bible says, submit to God and resist the devil. Don't feed into those things that he's trying to consume you with. The Bible says that he is consumed by the brightness of God's coming. He's destroyed by the brightness of God's coming. He's consumed by the words of God's mouth. That's the word of God. When you declare the word of God, the things that he tries to consume you with will now consume him because of the authority and the power that you take up in God. Amen. And the last thing I want to bring up is to know after you've done all these things, after you praise God, after you've repented, after you've after you've declared victory and healing and deliverance over yourself, after you've brought a new sacrifice to God. After you brought a new song, after you declared the, the, the fruit of the deliverance, you stand, Vicky. that's right. You stand and you wait on God's timing. Amen? A lot of times, because it has not happened in your timing, we get discouraged. We, get, we feel like our prayers had no power. We, we feel like that the thing that God, has, that God has promised won't ever come. But we have to know that God's timing is perfect. Amen. His timing is perfect. Acts 1 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Amen. On the third day, when God created the heavens and the earth, he gave us the moon, he gave us the stars, he gave us the sun. And that gives us the representation and the understanding of the times and seasons in the earth. But this is a separate type of time and season that God is saying in Acts 1-7. He said, it is not unto man for you to know the time or seasons which the Father has put in his own power. This is the spiritual realm. This is the things that God has put in his own power. Amen. It is not a, it is not appointed for us to know the things of God's power. Your healing, your deliverance did not come right now because it's not appointed for us to know the time in God's power. It's our authority. It's it's our job to take up our position and declare it over ourselves. To to take up our position and speak the things that God has promised over our lives. And then after that we leave it in God's hands and in his power and we continue to thank him. Because it's not appointed for us to know the time or season of what God does in his power.
Amen. Because let me tell you, if we get it right now, if we declare it over ourselves right now, and we get it right now. A lot of people would take that up and be prideful and say it was because of me this happened. God will always get glory at the end of the day. It's in his time. It's in his power. And let me tell you, God has the roadmap of your life. He sees the end from the beginning. God may be teaching you something through this. God may be teaching you to take up your weapons and declare these things over yourself. God may be teaching you patience through this thing. We don't know what God is doing. But let me tell you, it is not for us to know the time and the seasons, but it's for us to t take up our authority and arise sons and daughters of God. That's right, Brother Dan. And it's time for us to take up who we are in Christ, declare and decree the things that he has um, spoken over us, and to now await on him to manifest it, what we've declared. Amen? He will back up what we prayed, what we declared over ourselves concerning his children, concerning his will after we command him, but he's going to do it in his timing. Amen. As we intercede in the spirit and war and serve and thank God for what is already in, done, the dimension of heaven and earth comes together. We already know that the dimension between heaven and earth is time. That is what Pastor Blaine has taught us. This is what the word has taught us. And we know... That the dimension between heaven and earth is time. And it's God's timing. But what do you do in the midst of that time that's wa that you're waiting? You thank God. You serve him. We talked about this before. You thank God and you serve him. Daniel, in Daniel 10, he wrestled for three weeks with the, with the prince of Persia. Right? God had sent the messenger. God had sent the, um, Michael to go. He sent God. It was already done. God sent Michael to go to Daniel, but he was held up in the spirit realm for three weeks. <clears throat> he was held up in the spirit for three weeks. And what did Daniel do in those three weeks? Daniel did not set apart a three-week fast. He did not um, plan it in his head that I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to fast. The Bible says he didn't eat things that were pleasant. He ate like that the Daniel fast. He ate fruits, vegetables. He didn't eat things that would fill him up. He depended on God. Amen. And he waited. He did not set an appointed time of three weeks. It just took three weeks for the answer to come, for the angel to come. But what did Daniel do? He he wrestled with his flesh and what he did what he did, he submitted to God until he got his blessing. He submitted to God until he got his blessing. This is what God is telling us, to deny our flesh and to submit to him and to press in. And to press in until we get our blessing. Amen? Daniel knew who he was in God. He knew who God was. And that's why he did not accept what the enemy was trying to put against him. But he pressed in, he denied himself, and he pressed in for those three weeks. Them 21 days, the Bible says it was held up. Amen. He went into a three week period of mourning, fasting and praying, the Bible says. In response to Daniel's prayer, God sent a heavenly messenger to explain the vision. God had given um, Daniel a vision of the prince of Persia and and it, it troubled Daniel. You know, it troubled him of what he saw. And God sent the, 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 the rescue, but it was held up for three weeks. The prince of Persia wrestled. Michael for three weeks in the spirit realm, but what brought what brought Michael faster to to Daniel? What brought the answer that God sent to to Daniel was Daniel denying himself and serving God until he got what he. It, let me tell you, if Daniel would have stopped at two weeks, he might not have had his blessing. You stopping and coming short of waiting on God and serving God or giving up, you're coming sh What I'm learning is the breakthrough is right around the corner. Right when you're getting ready to give up, God is probably waiting for you to hold on a little bit more so you can have that thing. Do not give up. Daniel did not give up and he got his breakthrough. Amen. Daniel put it in his heart. I don't care how long this is going to take, but I am going to, I'm going to deny myself and I'm going to stand on what I know God is going to do. And that is what God is telling us today in this season to declare all these things like the Psalm has said, to bless him, to declare it over to ourselves, to, to take our stand and our position, but trust God in his timing. To trust God that he's going to bring it forth. To trust God on the promises and the giftings that he's given us. That he's promised us in the word. But you've got to press in. You cannot give up. 
Let me tell you, one thing I've learned in this walk is right when I'm getting ready to give up, God is getting ready to bless me with it. He's waiting for you to take that extra step of faith in waiting on God. There is a blessing in waiting. Let me tell you, I've learned God is God will show you how to enjoy waiting on him. Because let me tell you, sometimes we get so caught up on the one thing that we're praying for, that we forget and we don't see all the other things God is doing around us. Amen. One thing God is showing me in my walk is the thing that I'm waiting on. When I stand on his promise and I continue to seek him for that thing that, that I'm waiting for, God will do a lot of other things around your midst that will bless you. God will show you that he is a God who is in control. God is preparing you for the things. God is preparing you to receive the blessings. Amen. But you cannot give up. Declare, decree the things over your life. Know the promises that God has for you. Know that he is not a man that he should lie, but that he will give you. He will. He, he looks over his word to perform it. He's a God of his word. And after you decree it, after you declare it, waiting on the Holy Spirit in the upper room. Come on. Next week's Pentecost. Amen. God, I believe God is getting ready to do something amazing, but God is saying, hold on and just wait. It's going to be worth your while. Amen. But we have to position our prayers. We have to know what we're praying. Pray with a purpose. Pray with, pray with the, the promises of God at hand. Pray and declare the word over your life. Know that you are not the, the, the tail, but you're the head. Know that you are a lender and you're not a borrower. Know that above all things, as your soul prospers, you will prosper and be in good health. Know that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. There is no doubt that you are free. Know that he took the stripes on Calvary for your healing, that you are healed. In the name of Jesus. You have to know who you are. Pray. With a purpose, position your prayer and wait on God. Amen? Because let me tell you, it's going to be worth your while when you wait on the Lord. Amen? He's ordered, and know that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Amen? The position, the season you're in, God has you right where he wants you, man. Let me tell you, you think me doing this right now, God does not know that I... I know that I went through all my battles and everything last year. I know that I went through all my struggles last year. I know that I went through all my things last year for this moment right now. That God can, because God, through all that God has shown me that those things have no authority over me. God shows me that those things that I look to for comfort, that I look to for love, that I look to to try and fulfill something that only God could fulfill, fulfill had no authority over me. It could not fulfill. It could not satisfy. And I prayed and I asked God to deliver me. I asked God and God had me wait. God had me wait for a reason because he showed me the blessing in waiting and he showed me that he is the God who is in control. And when he's ready, when he thinks you're ready to receive the blessing, when he prepares you to receive the blessing, God could not pour his power on me like he has right now back then because I was not ready to receive it. Amen. Now, when I positioned myself, when I brought myself to repentance, when I recognized that those things in the world could not fulfill anything inside me, when I brought myself to a place where I know only God is a God that can give me love. Only God is a God that can give me the love that satisfies that longing in my soul. That God is the God that can comfort me. That God is the God who comforts you and blesses you and gives you strength to go on into the calling and the gift that God has given you. When you know that it's not out of your strength, when you know that it's not out of your power, when you know that it's not out of your might, and you come into that position that you know it's God, that you know that it's by Him you live, it's by Him you move, it, it's, it's by Him that you have your being, that is when the breakthrough comes. That is when it comes, when you know, when you put everything aside and you just stand on what you know God has given you. When you stand on the promises of God and you just wait in thanksgiving, you wait in anticipation, you wait in expectation, and you know that God is a God of his word, that God is a God that will never lie, that God is not a God that would that would, would risk his reputation, but he's a God that will always come forth for his children. He's a God that will give you the inheritance that he promises you. But in, your, in his timing. We don't want to be like the prodigal son. We don't want to take the inheritance before it's time. 
and waste it in the world. That is what you have to realize. When you ask in God and you're, and you're expecting it right now and it's not in God's time and you are trying to be like a prodigal son and take the inheritance before it's time. Allow God to give you the fullness of an inheritance in his timing. It's just like borrowing from a 401k. If you borrow before you, before you, um, if you borrow from a 401k before you retire, you're going to have to pay all that back with interest. There's a penalty of taking an inheritance before it's time, before it's fully ripe, before it's fully, you can look at it that way. God wants to give you it in full in his timing. Amen. So continue to stand. It's already yours. The word tells you your healing is yours. Your deliverance is yours. Your restoration, your peace, your, your, your sanity is all yours. Declare it over yourself and wait on God. Amen. Wait on God. His timing is truly perfect. And while you wait on God, serve him like Daniel did. Serve him until you get it. Don't only serve him a week and say, like all of us when we go to the gym and it don't work in one week and we ain't lose 100 pounds in one week, we want to give up. Don't be like that. Be like Daniel and serve God until he got his breakthrough. Be like a Jacob when he wrestled God until he got his breakthrough. Be like these people that God has shown us in the Bible. There is a, come on, Shirley. There is a time and a season for everything. Enjoy and embrace the season you are in, right? That's one thing God has been showing me. Embrace the season you in. Even if it's a season of needing healing and needing deliverance, embrace it. Because let me tell you, your testimony, when you come out of this thing, is going to touch so many lives. It's going to bring so much deliverance and healing. Embrace, let me tell you, you're working on your anointing, like PC said three weeks ago. You are working on your anointing. You are working on your testimony. You are working on your ministry. Your misery is being made for your ministry. Your test is for your testimony and your message for your message. Position your prayer today. Pray. Come on, I already got it. Amen. Come on, you serve like you already got it. And you declare it like you already got it. And you you walk like you already got it. Let me tell you, you got to see it before you see it. I always say this. See it in the, it's already done in the spirit realm. So you got to see it before you see it. See it in the spirit realm before you see it in the natural. Walk like you already got it. Amen. It's that fotismo word that Brother Jack always talks about. Fotismo, it's seeing it already. It's envisioning already you having your breakthrough and you walking like you got it already because you already do. It's already yours. The victory is yours in the name of Jesus. The cross shows you that the victory is yours. Amen. All right, I'm going to let you all go. Amen. So position your prayer. Don't pray amiss today. Amen. I think God wants to get us to a place where we have purpose in our prayers. Amen. And just don't pray, God, I think you want this for my life. Or God, um, if if this is what you want for me, do this. Or God, if that boy is mine, bring him into my... Nah. Come on. You got to know who's, who, who's you are and who you are. Dig into the word. Search. Come on. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Study the word of God. Dig in. Whatever you need is in that book. I guarantee you. Because this book is God. This book right here is God. Anything that you need is here. Dig into it and declare it over your life today. Keep preaching. Oh, Lord. Amen. I'm just grateful and excited. Amen. Because God is doing some great things. Amen. And one thing I've learned is that David would not be who he is without Goliath. Amen. David had a reputation. If you talk about David, you don't hear about the thing with Absalom. You don't hear a lot about Bathsheba. You don't. You hear about David and Goliath. That is the one thing. Even little kids know about David and Goliath. That is one of. That is the thing that David is known by. He's known by his battle. He's known by the victory in that battle. Amen. You are being put on the map. You are being put on the map because of your trial. Amen. You are being put on the map in the in the spirit realm. Them demons are trembling. You didn't think them demons were trembling when David when David when David defeated Goliath. 
by you going through your trial and God bringing you out, them devils, you are being put, they are being put on notice because of your life. Amen? A person hungry for truth never stops searching. Come on, Shirley. Never stops, never stops seeking God. Let me tell you, this word is so, that's one thing I, let me tell you, me being a pastor, I, sometimes I'm like, well, God, what am I going to preach about? And I look at this book, I said, I know I can probably find one script. This thing, I don't think anybody could ever in their full life preach this thing to the fullness. Like, everything that God wants you to get out of this word. His ways are above our thought ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. You could never stop searching God with this word. You will never come to a place where you have fully arrived. There's always new revelations in this book. There is always new um, truths in this book. You can look at a scripture that you thought you knew for years and go back and read it and God give you a new revelation on it. Let me tell you, do not stop searching for your answer. Do not stop searching. If you have not got it yet, position your prayer, declare it over yourself and continue to seek God on the manor whilst you're waiting with expectation. Amen. If, and one, let me tell you, one thing I've learned too, you may be expecting God for one thing, but God will give you something even greater. With Peter and John, when they walked to the temple and the lame man, when the lame man looked at them, he expected silver and gold. But what did Peter say? Silver and gold I have none, but such, I have, such as I have I give unto you. He expected them to give him money, but God gave him something that was far more greater than what he expected. So also expect greater than what you're expecting for. Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, think, or even imagine. According to the power that's within you. Declare it with the power that's within you. Amen. I'm going to let y'all go because these allergies are congesting me right now. I declare. Y'all pray for my deliverance. I declare I'm delivered from allergies right now in the name of Jesus. I declare my allergies to be gone. I bind allergies at its roots and I command it to go to the pit of hell right now in Jesus' name. Because I can't do this no more. Amen. And God, I'm going to wait on you to do it. Amen. <laughs> All right, Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for this such on-time word, God, that... We can position our prayers for greatness based on the promises and the giftings that you have given us, God. We know that you say that the gifts and callings are without repentance, God. The promises that you have for us are without repentance, God. And I just pray that through this word, God, that you would just increase everyone's faith, God, to know that they are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Amen. To know that when someone conquers an enemy... They defeat them. But when you are more than a conqueror, that enemy now becomes a slave to you. And Satan is a slave to us right now. We have authority and power to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And by no means shall he harm us. He does not power. He does not have power or authority over us. But we have power and authority over him in the name of Jesus. And we take up our prayer today, God, and we position it. God, based on the authority that you have given us. God, we position our prayer and we thank you first of all, God, that you are worthy to be praised, that you are worthy to be honored, that you are the God of the universe. You are the author and the finisher of our faith, God. You make us kings. You make us lords in your eyes, God, as you are being the, as you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. God, you put us in position in you, God. God, we are seated in heavenly places, God, with you, God. And we fight this, this battle on this earth, God, from a heavenly standpoint, God, in the name of Jesus. God, and as we praise you and we thank you, we pray that you deliver us and you rid us of all hindrances, that you would deliver us and rid us of all slander, God, and all jealousy, God, and all hidden iniquities of our heart, God. We renounce every sin of our heart, Every hidden iniquity right now, we give it over to you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And we pray, God, that you would rid us of these things that does not um, complement the, the character of you, God, that's within us. God, deliver and rid us, God, of all hindrances. God, deliver and, 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 and rid us of all addictions, God, of all gossip, God, of all slander, of all murder, God, in the name of Jesus. Of all jealousy and envy, God. Of all pride, God, in the name of Jesus. 
God, of all religious spirits, God, of all, all spirits of Jezebel and witchcraft right now. In Jesus' name, we pray that you rid us of these things, God. And right now, God, we thank you, God, and we give you a new praise, God, because we know that we are more than victors, God, in your, and than victims in the name of Jesus. We are victors in your name, God, in Jesus' name. God, you have given us the victory, God. We present our bodies to you, God. We give you a new praise, God. We give you a new um, sacrifice, God. We give you more of us, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we surrender more of our hearts to you. We surrender the parts of us that we, we've been holding on to, God, that gives us false comfort. God, we give you this new praise. We give you this new sacrifice, God, that you can do a new thing in us, God. Lord, and we thank you today, God, and we, God, declare these things, God, over our lives because we know we are going to do the plan. We are going to have the destiny, the plan, and the purpose that you have called us to be. We will be sons and daughters of righteousness, God. We will be vessels of honors. God, we are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. We will walk forth in this world, God, and we will go to the highways and byways, God, and compel them to come in. We will lift up your name, God, that you can draw all men unto you, God. We will go, God, to everyone we come encounter with and share the love and the hope of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, and even through this prayer, God, have as you have positioned this prayer, God, we pray that you would reveal to us how to position our prayers, God, to know that the more that we speak to you, the more that we speak the words, God, of, 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 of your words, God, the more that we speak the words of your anointed um, words, God, of the word of God, we know that Satan is consumed by the words of your mouth, God. And as we position our prayers, God, and we speak the words, God, of, of your words, God, and out of your mouth, God, as we speak the words out of your mouth, Satan is being consumed right now in the name of Jesus, God, and Lord the anointing that's within us, the hope of glory that's within us will destroy Satan, God. And we pray, God, through this word, God, we pray through this prayer, God, that you are ridding us of everything that is not of you, God, that you are positioning us. God, as next week, as next week is Pentecost, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that your power, God, will fill our hearts, that the new spirit will come upon us, a fresh wind will come upon us, revival will come upon us, God, that you would breathe, God, a breath of revival that you will restore God, the breath of God in our lives, everything that has stolen, the breath Satan, I put you on notice, God, the, the, the breath stealer, I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I command you to go to the pit of hell, to the fiery black box of God right now, that everybody under the sound of my voice would be rid of the stealer of breath, of that spirit, of that foul spirit right now, that they would be prepared, God. Through this week, you would prepare their hearts, God, that as Pentecost comes, as the season comes of Pentecost, God, that we would not be drunk on wine, but we would be filled with the new wine. As the book of Joel says, as the prophecy of Joel says, God, that this is that spoken of the prophet Joel, that we would be filled with new wine, God, that you would bring a fresh anointing, God. You would bring a fresh spirit upon us, God. That you would bring more of your presence, God, upon us, God. That we would walk in the likeness of Christ. That we would walk in the character of Christ. That we would react the way Christ would react. That we would love the way Christ would love. That we will compel the way Christ would compel, that we would speak the way Christ would speak, God, that we would bring hope and glory, God, to you, that we would bring hope to this lost world, God, and we would give you glory. God, we thank you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name, amen. Lord, my Bible fell. Oh, Hallelujah. I hope this word bless you. Let me tell you, this word bless my soul. Help me, Jesus. This thing, bless my soul. Position your prayers, church. Come on. I feel like going straight to the gym after that message. Bench pressing for Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. God is good, man. This is the first one that has already taken place. I believe that you should But God wants to do a new thing in your life. God wants to show himself be in a new way in your life, but we just got to position ourselves to receive what God wants to do. Come on, anything that you know is talking to you from God, I ask you to lay at the feet of Jesus. Any moment that, that you know is blocking you from God in the presence of God, God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. Come on, it might fall, but it never fails. That's right. <laughs> but God wants you to receive all that he has for you. Amen. But We've got to make that sacrifice first of ourselves. Amen. 
that that new sacrifice, that new song that that David talked about. You got to give those things that is holding you down. Those things that you those things that you held on to that gave you false comfort. Those things that um, that 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 didn't give God glory. You got to let those things go. Amen. And let me tell you, it'll be the best thing in your life. Because let me tell you, the freedom of God compared to those things that are keeping you in bondage is something that you will never want to give up in Jesus' name. That attic reception. Oh, I didn't put on Wi-Fi. That's probably why. All right, whatever. Love y'all. See y'all later.